Terry Brock with terrybrock.com. Memory is very important. And now, I'm not talking about just memory in your computer. Yes, that is important, and the more the better. You always want that. But I'm talking about memory between your uh, ears, in your brain, what you can do. And today, if you want to learn some memory ideas that can help you and why you need it in the world of social media, in Google, and those kind of things, you are going to enjoy meeting a person that we have on the line right now. His name is Bob Gray, and he joins us from his offices up there in Canada. Bob, good to have you with us today. How are you, Tommy? T Terry. Tommy, Tommy. <laughs> Can we start again? Yeah, the, the, the memory expert. <laughs> Blown it right off the bat. <laughs> uh, I know. Now, I know this guy well enough. That I know he's, he's pulling our legs here. But you see, he is a man that is brilliant. He writes with, you know, two hands writing at the same time. you got to go to his website and take a peek at it. He does it in two th a really important skill that employers are asking for yeah, and today, feet right? Isn't, isn't that right, Bob? <laughs> That's right. Hands and feet blindfolded laterally inverted, a skill that everybody could use. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. But uh, I was fascinated. Now, I got a chance to sit in Bob's audience. A little while ago, he was speaking, and we watched him, and he went through uh, talking about something I think is amazing that he has. He's memorized all of the countries in the world and their capital, as well as their uh, size of how large they are, population, all kinds of things like that. And so a lot of people today would go, oh, come on, why would I need that when I can just Google it? And so, uh, Bob, I'm going to turn that over to you from one person who I don't teach, and that's not something I get into of teaching memory, but I love it, and I love learning about it. And I would like to hear your reaction when people say, well, we don't need that in the age of Google and all the search engines that are out there. Why do we need to know all these kind of details? Well, it, it's a great point, actually, Terry. I, I mean, and if if somebody did want to know the capital, the area, and the population of of uh, of been in and I'm not around then go ahead and use Google I mean but I, I do that simply um, to show this incredible power that every one of us has and one of my biggest challenges when I'm teaching is that people tend to think this is an innate ability that I was born with it it's not it's simply an application of of memory systems that, that we all have this this ability to use so I give a powerful memory demonstration to show what we're capable of doing and then the rest of the presentation whether it's a keynote or workshop shows how they can adapt and apply that to business mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense so in other words there's nothing really special about you right <laughs> Not at absolutely well, the writing and talking backwards that's kind of strange, yeah. But that is <laughs> as far as my memory ability is concerned. If I don't apply a system truly, though, I'll forget to uh, you know take out the, the garbage or whatever, just like anybody else, or you know, where I put my glasses. If if I don't apply a system, my, my truly, and this is one of the biggest things I one of the biggest challenges I have is convincing people that my memory is no better than theirs, it's just a trained memory, as opposed to there's a very good chance that theirs is an untrained memory. Yeah, I like the way you put that. It's a trained memory. I've seen that, and uh, as I shared with you, I uh, started as a little child. Uh, I think it was in junior high school over at my grandfather's. He had a book called The Memory Book from Harry Lorraine and Jerry Lucas, and you remember them from long ago, the uh, way that they taught us how to uh, have a trained memory and learn certain right. systems. I really like the way you put that, that we really need a system. Is that right? That's right. There are systems that you can apply in business. See, Google is wonderful, but it, technology has tended to, it, it's, it's made us externalize um, our memory, and it can make us a little lazy. We don't, we don't encode information um, because it's just a click away. And I don't have a problem with any of that, but where I have a problem is with relationships with customers and clients. Mm. Uh, I... Uh, there's a there's a dry cleaners actually literally about a mile from me and there are two dry cleaners that I pass to go to this particular lady and every time I go in there she has my name she knows because I generally bring my clothes in because I'm going away to give a presentation she asks where I'm going she asks if I'm taking my golf clubs because she knows that I'm a golfer not very good but I enjoy it she's a dog lover I'm a dog lover she asks how Millie my dog is and I'm not kidding every time I go in there she has something to say and this is not even a pre-arranged appointment because she doesn't know when I'm coming in to bring my clothes in. She doesn't know when I'm picking them up. Mm -hmm. and I can go in there and there can be two or three people in front of me and she does it with them all, Terry. Mm. Right. Now, she's actually even a little more expensive than one of the dry cleaners, but she has my business because I'm not a customer or, or a client to her. I'm a person. And that's where Google won't help you. If, 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 if 
if you bump into a customer or a client or a patient, I do a lot of work with dentists. It's funny, dentists and financial planners are two big groups that I speak to, different industries, but the business model is pretty similar, whereby they have hundreds of customers or clients or patients, and they see them on a semi-regular basis, every three months, six months, or a year, and they're in the same town, and pre-arranged appointments are fine, because everything can be on the screen, and they can have a quick review before they come in. But when you see them outside of a pre-arranged appointment, when that dentist or that financial planner sees me at the supermarket or the mall or the theater, Google isn't going to help you there. Yep, right? you're you can't right. just, if they're walking towards you, you can't say, they say, hey, Bob, how are you? You can't say, um, just a second. Let me look. <laughs> what company are you? Um, <laughs> I am nearly, Mary, how are you? And um, how's John? And one second, and your, your children, Louise and Stephen, how are they? Google's <laughs> not going to help you in those instances. That would but, seem a little fake. <laughs> yeah, but, but the, the beauty with memory systems is they allow you to, turn, to, to use this internal hard drive. It, it truly does. And that's the importance of, of a trained memory. It's making people feel like they're not, as I said earlier, they're not, they're not customers, but they're people. Because honestly, and you've heard this before, but the sweetest sound of somebody is the sound of their name. So that builds relationships, it leads to referrals, and that's the biggest areas. And also where a, a customer might ask you a product information about your services. And the, the salesperson that says, let me look that up and get back to you, as opposed to being able to recite the information from memory, has, has more credibility. Yeah. So don't get me wrong, I love Google, I really do, but there are areas where it's made us a little lazy and um, and memory systems can actually elevate you in business. Yeah, I would have to agree with you. I think that it's not either or, it's both and. I use Absolutely. Google and other things extensively and it's wonderful to have that. And if I need to know the capital of Benin, yeah, it's <laughs> nice to know that. Um, but I also think there's another benefit too. It's like, and tell me what, I would really value your opinion on this. The more we use it, the uh, better our brains become and our memory becomes stronger as we use it. And so it's a use it or lose it kind of thing. And I think that we do ourselves a disservice when we don't memorize and we don't force our brain to remember more and learn more. Uh, we're actually seeing it decrease. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I mean, there, there, there have been numerous studies that, that say aside from the number one is actually physical exercise. But to help stave off Alzheimer's and dementia is, is literally to take up Sudoku or, or jigsaw puzzles, uh, uh, crossword puzzles, learn an instrument, um, because it engages the brain in a creative way. And, and if you actually look into memory systems, and I know that you're very familiar with memory systems, um, Terry, you know that you can't be more creative than forming crazy nonsensical images between what you wish to remember and something you already know. And then when you delve into these systems and you, you learn the, the systems called the phonetic index for memorizing numbers, it, it couldn't be more creative. So even, so just for that alone, to help in stave off this, this, the, the, this, uh, this, 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 let, let, let's just say that, uh, I don't want to say to stave off dementia and Alzheimer's, but it's there have been studies that show that it increases considerably, you know, the, to ward it off. Yeah, exactly. We're in the early stages right now, and those that are the professional, I'm certainly not a professional, and I'm not a medical person, but we know that much of the literature now is saying the more you use your brain, the more you can kind of push it back. We're not saying cure, but we're saying you might be able to forestall it for a bit. And besides, you have a lot of fun when you're seeing those crazy objects doing silly, goofy <laughs> things in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when it comes to remembering people, and you have to kind of assign weird, strange images to, to their ears or their nose or their, their cufflinks or their tie but you do get used to not laughing but it's it's yeah. an incredible way of 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 maintaining creativity and, and i've worked with with uh, what what have often been looked at as as, as left brain industries bankers and accountants um, actuaries and um going in there and i've and i've worked with them over the years many times and initially i thought well this is going to be a challenge but not at all not at all once we show that you have this <clears throat> You're given this license to creatively think because nobody's nobody's going to know what these images are. But once you're given this license to just cre to, to think creatively, 
and then you attach it to something you know. And once you bring that memory in, it drags in this, this crazy image that you then turn into the piece of knowledge that you wanted to memorize. It's outstanding. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I've been doing it since I was a kid, and and uh, as you know, as you you well know, as you're interested in memory systems yourself, it is phenomenal. And it seems a shame that that we just push this aside because we can get this information instantly. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's uh, a lot better. We're healthier. We're stronger that way. And besides, another thing we need to do is uh, memorize a lot of things like passwords or so. I'd be interested in your feelings on uh, the idea of using passwords and uh, writing those down. Some people say, you know, you will write it down and put it someplace that you'll know where it is, etc. Uh, and there's also programs you can get that will remember a lot of passwords you have. What are your thoughts on that uh, whole subject in general? Well, yeah, and we spoke about this before. I mean, as far as passwords and writing, I, I don't have one password written down anywhere, and I don't have a duplicate password. Um, every password is different. Every password is unique and not written down anywhere. It's all in my head. And it's, and it's, uh, and it's a combination of different memory systems that allow me to mix it up. The problem with having all, all your passwords down in one place or in, it, in a program is that I'm not confident that somebody couldn't get hold of it. Yeah, I agree. Right? Not confident they couldn't get hold of it. And uh, uh, truly, I mean, I, I actually teach that in, in with the phonetic index, which you're familiar with, which is a, 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 an application or a system that turns numbers into images. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually take words, which people would generally write a word down as a password, but you can actually turn that word into numbers. Mm -hmm. And nobody, nobody, because in all the years I've been teaching this, truly, although this is the phonetic index is a system that should be taught in schools, it should be part of the school curriculum, it's a closely guarded secret, literally by the magic community, and outside of that group and people that are passionate about memory, nobody knows about this system that's 300 years old, and it's absolutely, it, it's absolutely made for memorizing uh, encoding passwords that can turn words into numbers that nobody nobody would, would have a, a, any idea of decoding. Yeah, absolutely. And also you get that added benefit and fun of expanding your brain and working it even more. It really goes far on that. Well, then, Bob, yes. as we kind of wrap up here, tell us a little bit, if someone's watching this and they're thinking, okay, I really want to learn more, I want to do more with memory, we definitely want them going over to your site, which we can see conveniently displayed on the screen there <laughs> of uh, www.memoryedge.com. We'll make a point of that, very important. But what would you recommend for them to do to kind of get started to learn more about memory and to improve their memory? Well, for my, my daughter, I started my daughter at the age of four with a system called the chain and and then the peg and this is you chain is used for memorizing lists of information and it can be adapted for speeches presentations to do lists equations formulas but it's a wonderful way of of linking this information so I would say the chain or the link is the first system and you can start somebody out literally at four or five years old then you elevate to the peg system this is a system of lists of information that you can recall but you're able to pull the information out in random order. It's like a cataloging system. And then my, my daughter was a willing guinea pig, around about eight or nine, because you need about a, a grade five level of education, of understanding the English language, to learn the phonetic index. It's phonetic sounds and numbers. Um, that would be the third system. And then later on in business, you can actually apply two of those systems for memorizing names. So you, you, it's funny, you talk about the memory book. I mean. I have a book on my website, but the memory book is still a classic book mm -hmm. by Harry Lorraine. Tony Buzan has wonderful books. Yes. Dominic O'Brien that changed the system slightly, the phonetic system slightly for the better. Um, mm -hmm. They're all wonderful books that can introduce somebody in a fun way um, to memory systems. But I certainly would encourage anybody that has children, and it doesn't matter what age they are, but you can start them at four or five. And, it, and if they're in high school, college, absolutely should look at these systems because we tend to, to, to think left brain and we don't encourage the right side of our brain where color pictures and imagination and creativity lie, all the elements that are essential to these systems. So before they get pushed into this little left brain box, um, it's a plea from me actually to get your children involved in memory systems because it would be a lifelong um, skill um, that, that they will carry throughout the rest of their lives. I, I learned this when I was about six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. And I 
you know, I'm almost 60 and I still use it every single day. Excellent. Without it. You're very good. Well, Bob, you have helped many, many people on that. And uh, those of you watching this, I would encourage you to bounce over to his website, see that, look around, take some time and treat yourself to some of the videos he has there and the capabilities that are out there. It'd be really good. So, uh, Bob, thank you very much for joining us today. And we will look forward to seeing you again a little bit later on down the road, sir. Thank you very much, Terry. By the way, Porto Novo is the capital of Venice. <laughs> <laughs> very good to know. Yes, yeah, right, because you don't have access to Google at that point. <laughs> thank you so much, Terry. That is good. Thank you very much, Bob.